Hey guys, how's it going? Michael Troy here. Today we're looking at Octobriana and the Underground Full Tilt Boogie Part 2 of 2. This is a two-part series that came out last year or the year before. I reviewed the first issue, so this second issue review is a long time coming. This is actually one of the most requested videos I've ever had on my channel. So um, the viewer keeps requesting it. Kuno Lay Hair 2306, this one's for you. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Hit that like button and let's get right into it. Okay, so the first issue was a great start. Octobriana, a little bit of background, is this great character that has been around since, I think, the 60s. It was created by college students as this public domain character to be used as part of a movement. It's sort of anarch anarchistic and just, like, rebellious and just, like, a fun thing. Um, the most probably noteworthy Octobriana project, um, since it is public domain, is by Jim Rugg. And uh, not only is it my favorite Octobriana depiction, it's one of my favorite comic books. It is so cool. It's a black light comic book. Very, very tough competition. Um, I've been considering doing my own Octobriana comic book. Um, and I don't know, I feel like the best one's kind of already been done, so I'm a little hesitant. But we'll see. Anyway, let's dive into this. First off, let's check out this gorgeous cover by my good buddy Yannick Paquette, famous Wonder Woman artist, um, good girl artist, just like killing it. Such an amazing um, detail and just like his covers are always amazing. Um, most um, often paired up with Nathan Fairbairn and I believe he is on this cover as well. He's been coloring some of his own covers and working with some other colorists, but um, it's always a good deal when he works with Nathan. Dead Good Comics, issue two. I love when the characters talk on the comic books. It's such a comic trope of the past that I always embrace and definitely should. Um, it needs to stick around. Um, love the logo here, Dead Good Comics. Um, don't know what else they put out. Don't know if they have any more plans for Octobriana. Um, they seem like a very, like, uh, adept studio here, much like, um, IDW or Boom or something like that, like a powerhouse indie comic book. So there's a few stories in here. Red Girl Summer, Part 2, Full Tilt Boogie, Stu Taylor, writer, and Stephen Harris, artist, Sophie Dodgson, colorist, Josh Reed, letterer. Faith on a Friday, Tamur Hussain, writer, Gary Erskine, artist, Yul uh, Zamor, colorist, Robin Jones, letterer, and the epilogue by Stu Taylor, writer, Simon Fraser, artist, and Josh Reed, letterer. Covered by Yannick Peckett and Nathan Fairbairn. Um, 1980 summer special variant cover by Rufus Dayglow. Interesting. Another cover by N. Stephen Harris. So definitely, I'm sure you've heard the name N. Stephen Harris. I'm sure you've heard the name Gary Erskine. So this is in deep, deep indie. You know, there are some names and like it looks legit. The production level is very good. The art is amazing. The story feels very lush and deep. Um, she's kind of going up against uh, Baba. What's her name? Baba, Baba Nega. Um, she's like this ancient witch who like had all these prophecies. She's kind of like, um, Nostradamus in a lot of ways. A lot of people compare her prophecies coming true to the prophecies of Nostradamus. And, um, I love the coloring in here. Like this, uh, tone that they're using looks really cool. This is a fun book. I, I hope that they do more. I haven't really seen any um, I think that they have plans to do more and maybe more is coming. Maybe I just need to have missed the boat on it. I don't know. But Octobriana looks great here. She is such a great character, like the ultimate bad girl in a lot of ways. She Hulk with a blonde pony. I don't know. Um, but it's weird because I feel like, she, you know, maybe, and this is by design, I feel like she's always kind of like, not the point of the story in a way. She's almost like a vehicle for the story, if that makes any sense. Um, gorilla, who doesn't love a gorilla, especially one carrying um, a weapon like that running through the city. <laughs> the choice, speaking of comic tropes, right? Like uh, uh, things that sell color covers. I forgot the famous comic book artist who did it. Now, please sound off in the... Um, 
comments if you know what I'm talking about. If you know, you know, because I know my readers are my readers. See, I'm such a comic book hoe that um, I'm calling my viewers readers. But you are readers as well. I know that you are such good readers. I just think it's funny when somebody picks somebody up in the air and holds them by their butt. I'd be like, get your hand off my butt. I mean, totally uh, regardless of the fact that you're just like f hoisting me and throwing me through the air. Anyway, what was I talking about? Um, anyway, I had a point. Um, something, I don't know. Anyway, I got distracted by the art, but that's a good thing because I'm here to talk about the book. I really love the colors. If you watch my channel, you know that I'm all about color and I think the color looks consistently good throughout. Loki would love to work with these people on an Octoberiana book. So if you're down, I'm down. Some nice Kirby crackle. Like I'm saying, this is just fun. What a way to use. I think this is like public domain at its best and this is a really good character for it. You know, it's interesting because Mickey Mouse uh, just entered the public domain and obviously it's the very earliest version of him. And I thought we'd see a flood of Mickey Mouse, but not so much, you know. Eric Larson um, utilize, utilizing him to hilarious effect in The Savage Dragon is pretty much the only version I've seen thus far, unless people are working on them and we got a lot of Mickeys coming. So, but I, th I would love to see Octobriana get more exposure and more love because I feel like, I don't know, you know, to the point of her is to sort of like, just be bombastic and revolutionary and utilized in a meaningful way. Um, and she's used here to great effect, but I feel like it's almost very much like just making her a superhero, if that makes any sense. And then we switch art, and I do love the art here. I think that they captured it, uh, the essence of the character very well. She looks totally dope there. Now that is one big weapon, right? I don't know. It's weird to see her in all these different interesting scenarios. You know, she's like a very uh, malleable character in that way. So I hope that my um, my number one fan, I, I know you're watching, you better be watching. I hope you're very happy that I finally reviewed this book and I'm sorry that it took so long. I hope it proves to be worth it in the end. As you can see, the art is just as gorgeous um, and the story is just as fun and fast, uh, satisfying as the last one, but I do remember that we're ending with this ridiculously crazy two-page spread, the likes of which I don't think I've ever seen in comics before. How crazy is that? This huge-ass walrus on the, uh, what do they call it? The deck of a ship is really kind of crazy. And um, coming soon, Octobriana in the Underground versus Comrade Kaiju. So I guess we do have more Octobriana coming. I will definitely look for it. Uh, Kuna Le Leher 2306. Um, you know, as long as they keep making Octobriana, I will find it and review it for you. I really love the art on this. This is completely gorgeous. Um, some really amazing images of Octobriana throughout. So there you have it, you all. At long last forever in the making the much my most requested review ever octobriana and the other underground full tilt boogie part two of two thanks for watching guys subscribe to my channel if you haven't already hit that like button and i will definitely bring you more soon